So I asked you guys what you wanted to see in the next tutorial. And one of my fantastic longtime supporters, uh, Trey, asked for a somewhat selfish request, which, you know, I don't think it's selfish at all. I asked what you wanted to see. And they mentioned about wanting uh, survival mechanics. So that's what I've done here. You can see in the bottom left, we have hunger meter, thirst meter, and stamina. If I sprint around, you can see the stamina uh, drains. If I let go, it will wait a second and then charge. And then we've got food items out in the world, which if I walk over, that will replenish our health and thirst. So the watermelons, they replenish health and thirst. You can see if we go over it, you can see that those meters changed and went up. And then we've got some meat here, which if we go over, that just replenishes our food. Go over these and replenish our stats. Then they will carry on draining down slowly. So let's just get straight into it and see how all of this can be put together. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is we're going to start a new project. I am using Unity Hub 3.12. I'm going to be using 2021.3.4, uh, which is the current LTS version as of recording this video. And I'm going to pick the first person core template here. If it's not showing up here, it might be in this list and you'll just have to hit download. Um, but I'm going to select our first person template and I'm going to name this uh, Survival Tutorial. And we're just going to go ahead and create this project. So here I am in the first person template. Uh, there's a bit of a readme here if you want to read through this. Some things to note are that this uses the universal render pipeline as well as the new input system. And if we hit play, you can see that we've just got a nice simple, uh, we've got a nice simple first person controller. We can hold down shift to sprint and space to jump, just like you would expect. Nice, you know, nice bit of a little mini environment to jump around in here. So let's get to work with our survival system. So the first thing I am going to do is I'm going to right click, uh, create a folder. I'm just going to call this a project. Then I'm going to right click, create folder call this runtime, right click, create another folder called survival system. And then finally in here, I will create a new C sharp script and I will call this a survival manager. And then let's open up our survival manager script in our IDE. Okay, so I'm going to zoom in a bit here and let's start putting our variables in. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make a header area just to keep things organized in the inspector and we'll um, set this to hunger. And I'm going to do a serialized field, private float, and we'll do this um, max hunger. And I'm going to knock that down. And then we'll want a private float, which is current hunger, as well as another serialized field, private float hunger, the leash right and i'm just going to set this to one by default and then i'm going to have um a public property called uh hunger percent and this is going to be so our ui manager can set the bill of the the sort of circle that indicates how empty the player's hunger is um we'll do a public float hunger percent and this is just going to return our current hunger divided by the maximum hunger. So if our maximum hunger is 100 and our current hunger is 50, this will return 0 0.5. So we can set the fill amount of our radial uh, UI display to half. And we'll know that we're halfway to being out of hunger. So then I'm just going to copy this and we'll paste it. And I'm just going to replace every mention of hunger with thirst. So, so that's our first survival meter kind of set up. And then the stamina meter uh, is going to need a few different things because this doesn't drain over time, just sort of in the background. This will only drain um, when the player is sprinting and it recharges kind of on its own. So we'll need to keep track of all of that. So I'm just going to do another header and I'm just going to call this stamina. We'll do serialize field private float max stamina and I'll set this equal to 100 as well and again just pop that down there we'll do a serialized field 
private float. This is the stamina depletion rate. And we'll set this equal to one. Serialize field. Private float. Stamina recharge rate. I'm going to set this to 2F. Serialize field. Private float. Stamina recharge delay. And I'll set this equal to 1F. Then we just need some, uh, another private float, and this is our current stamina. And a private float. Current stamina delay counter. And a public float stamina percent, which does our current stamina divided by our max stamina. I'm also going to make a new section for our um, player uh, references. And then here, I'm just going to have a serialized field, and I will do a private, and then we're going to get the starter assets inputs um, class, and we'll just call this uh, player input. Again, I don't like that it goes up to that line, so I'm going to put it there. So this is what we need to get a reference to to see whether the player is holding down shift see and to see whether they are sprinting. Now in our start method, we'll do private start. I'm going to set our current hunger equal to our maximum hunger. Current thirst equal to max thirst. Current stamina equal to our max stamina. And then in our private void update function, so in our update function here, we are going to deplete the current hunger by our hunger depletion rate at times by time dot delta. And then we're going to deplete our current thirst by our thirst depletion rate times by time dot delta time. Now, if our current hunger is 100 and our hunger depletion rate is 1, then this 100 will translate to 100 seconds. So we could use our max hunger, say it's 100, we could use that to be 100 seconds that the player can last without eating before they run out of hunger or they run out of food sort of sustenance and then you know they die or start taking damage or something like that if we change the hunger depletion rate we can change how fast these drain so if we had a hunger depletion rate of two and a max hunger rate of 100 we'd actually only be able to last 50 seconds so it's up to you how you want to skew these the hunger depletion rate you could buff it or nerf it dependent on certain things so you could keep this at say 100 this at one and then a player just normally kind of base stats to be able to last 100 seconds without running out of um without their food meter running out but you could introduce being say poisoned in your game and then for 10 seconds the hunger depletion rate goes up to two and then it goes back to one or you could have you know uh, a meal that's got some sort of flag on it that says they are now full. So the hunger depletion rate changes to 0 0.5 for 10 seconds. So it doesn't go down as fast, but then it reverts back to one. So that's why we've got the hunger depletion rate and we're not hard coding just one in there. Because you may want to change and modify this at runtime based on various effects. And that gives you the kind of, and that gives you the option to do that. With that said, we're going to now say that if the current hunger is less than or equal to zero, or our current thirst is less than or equal to zero, then I'm going to make a public static unity action. And I'm just going to say um, on layer died and for this we need to 
for Unity Engine events. So we need to be using Unity Engine dot events, and we'll do public static Unity action on player died. And then if we run out of hunger or thirst, I'm just going to say on player died dot invoke. Now that might be you might want to do something differently. Like I said, you may want to damage the player over time. And if that's the case, if it's below zero or less than or equal to zero, then in our player references, you could get a reference to your player's help system. And then here, start damaging them each frame before they eat again and put their hunger and thirst back up kind of out of the danger zone. And then here as well, I'm just going to clamp um, current hunger to zero as well as current thirst to zero just so we can't go into negative numbers um, because this could end up with them being at negative 100 hunger and then if they eat something it'll go up to say negative 50 it won't actually put them above it which isn't what you want so we need to clamp this to zero we don't want it to go below zero and we can <clears throat> we don't want that to go below zero so we can just put that there so moving on we need to manage the sprint now so if we go over to the starter assets input class, you can see that we've got a public bool here called sprint. And then on our survival manager, we can actually access that, to see whether they are sprint, if the player is sprinting. So we can say if input, uh, player input dot sprint, then we can do current stamina is minusing the stamina depletion rate times by time dot delta time. And we'll set the current I'm going to delay counter back to zero. So before it starts recharging, uh, we're going to have to wait whatever we've set here. So this stamina recharge delay. We'll have to wait one second before this stamina starts recharging. So we can say if we are not uh, holding the sprint button and our current stamina is less than our maximum stamina, then we want to increase our current stamina delay counter. So we can say if our current stamina delay counter is less than the stamina recharge delay then let's do current stamina plus equals time dot the time so we can check now to see whether the stamina delay counter is greater than recharge delay and if it is then we can start charging our stamina so if current stamina Delay counter is greater than or equal to our stamina recharge delay. Then we are going to start increasing our stamina. So current stamina plus equals stamina recharge rate times by time dot delta time. So we're doing what we're doing here, but in reverse. So we're increasing our current stamina back up, and then we want to clamp our current stamina to the max stamina in case it goes over. So we can say if current stamina is greater than our max stamina, then our current stamina equals our max stamina. So that's those meters um, working. That should be the values working. Now underneath our um, update function, we're going to make some public methods which will be able to which will be able to replenish our hunger and thirst so so i'm going to say public void replenish hunger thirst and this will take in a hunger amount and a thirst amount and we can just say current hunger plus equals our hunger amount and current Thirst plus equals our thirst amount. And then let's again make sure that they can't go above the max. So we'll say if current hunger is greater than our max hunger, then current hunger is equal to our max hunger. And if current thirst is greater than max thirst, current thirst is max thirst. So that's it for our hunger and thirst stat. Now, if you're doing some sort of space game, you could have a oxygen meter as well, or like in Subnautica, for example, you've got hunger, thirst, and oxygen. You could do, you know, you could just add this again, 
add an O2 meter, um, a sanity meter if you wanted like some sort of mental health system that decreased over time. Um, you know, this is going to be as expandable to whatever stats that you want. And again, through upgrades, through say play upgrades, you could increase your maximum hunger if you picked up a certain item or equipped a certain item. You could change the depletion rate based on certain stats or statuses such as poisoned or healthy or whatever. Um, so you can expand on this as you want. Um, so let's just go back over to Unity, make sure we're not getting any console errors, which shouldn't be doing. And um, we'll hook all of this up in the inspector. So let's go over to our project. We're going to go to our player capsule, which is our little bean here. This is the representation of our player. And we're going to add our survival manager script to this. And then let's drag in our starter assets input script into our survival manager script. And if I go over to debug mode, you can see our current hunger, current thirst, and current stamina. When we hit play, that'll be set to the max, and then they'll start to drain based on what we're doing. So go to the game tab, hit play. So you can see there that they are decreasing per second. If we start to sprint, our current stamina will go down. If we stop holding sprint, it just instantly starts to recharge. So that's why we've come back over to the inspector. We have done something wrong. So let's go back over to our script. Let's come down to the sprint section. Yeah, so here we need to increase our current stamina delay counter by time dot delta time. Uh, we'd put the wrong variable in. So let's go back and check that that's all working. Hit play. And again, looking back down on this bottom right corner. So at the current stamina, we'll start to sprint. That's going down. Then we'll let go of sprint. That'll start to increase. It gets to one, and then it starts to recharge our stamina. If we start sprinting, the current stamina delay counter gets set back to zero. Then we can let go. It goes up to one, and then it starts recharging. So let's get some sort of UI um, set up now so we can actually see this kind of in-game. So in my runtime folder, I'm just going to drag in my UI images. If you want these, they are available um, with the project files on Patreon. But they're very simple. It's just a circle. If we open this up, it's literally just a white circle. And then there's an apple, a water drop, and then a lightning bolt. You know, nothing too complex. You could make these in Critter. Um, but I will include these UI files with the scripts over on Patreon, which is patreon.com forward slash um, but let's get these set up. So if I right click create um, UI and um, we will create um, an image and then that will create a canvas as well as the UI event system is already in here. So we've just got our canvas here and we have some we have our so with our canvas, I'm going to set this to scale with screen size and I'm at 4K here. So I'm going to put 3840 by 2160 as the reference resolution. And then I'm going to drag our image down to the bottom left corner. So scroll out, come out of debug mode, and I'm going to set the anchor to the bottom left corner to increase the sort of scale of that. And then I'm going to choose my circle sprite. I'm going to rename this to the Hunger meter. Then I'm going to duplicate the image and parent it back to itself. And then here I'm just going to choose the apple. And then I'll make this just a little bit smaller by scaling it by 0.75. I might actually make that a bit smaller still. So I'll do uh, 0 0.6. There we go. That's our hunger meter. And then I'm going to go over to where it says image type, choose filled. I'm going to keep it on radial 360 and but set it to top and make it anti-clockwise. So this is where the percentage is going to come in. So if we're fully, you know, we're fully fed, 
it's at one, so the circle will be full. Then as our percentage starts to go down, the bar is going to start to decrease as well. And then we can pick up a food item and that will increase this percentage. And that's how our UI will work. So we've got our hunger meter. Let's um, duplicate this. I'm going to rename this to first meter and duplicate it again. And I will rename this to stamina meter. And let's rename the child objects as well. So the stamina is going to be the lightning bolt and the thirst is going to be the first image. And then I'm going to move. I'm going to leave stamina at the bottom. I'm going to move up thirst and hunger a little bit. And then I'll move up hunger on its own just a little bit more. And then I'm going to move all three just away from that bottom just to give them a bit of padding. If we go back over to our game, you can see our meters here. But currently they won't do anything. Uh, we need to make a UI management script. So let's go back over to our survival system. I'm going to create a C sharp script and call this survival UI manager. Let's open that up in our IDE. So this is just a really simple script. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a serialized field. And this will be a private survival manager reference. I'll just call this survival manager. And then I'm going to do a serialized field private image. And this will be um, hunger meter first meter and stamina meter. And then in the fixed update method, which is done on the physics step, so we won't run it each frame, so it's just going to be a little bit more performant. We can do hunger meter is equal. We're going to say hunger meter dot fill amount. And this is where we're going to set this equal to our survival manager hunger percent. That's where these come into play. So we can do first meter dot fill amount is equal to survival manager dot first percent. And finally, stamina meter dot fill amount is equal to survival manager dot stamina percent. And it really is that simple. So if we go back over to our canvas and add on our UI manager, we'll drag in our player capsule to the survival manager um, reference slot. And then we'll put our hunger meter in hunger meter, thirst meter in thirst meter, and stamina meter in stamina meter. And then we'll hit play. And you can see they start to drain kind of as soon as the game starts. If we sprint, the sprint one will start to drain. We've got quite a big sort of sprint pool. We can sprint for 100 seconds. Um, but then if we let go of sprint, it'll wait for a second and then it will start to refill. Let's put some better sort of um, stats in here. So let's go back to our player capsule. For max stamina, I'm going to say we can sprint for 10 seconds before we have to wait. And we'll have to wait a second and then it'll recharge twice as fast as it drains, so it should fully recharge in five seconds. Maximum thirst. We'll say we get thirstier quicker than we get hungry. So we'll set that to 75 seconds. Then I'm just going to change the color of these. So let's get our hunger meter. I'll set this to kind of an orangey color. Thirst could be a nice blue color. I'm going to set to a nice green color. And if we hit play, be there starting to drain now and sprint. So we can only sprint for 10 seconds Then we have to wait for a second and then that will recharge. Sprint some more. Now, obviously, when we run out of stamina at the minute, we can carry on sprinting kind of forever because we're not checking on our um, we're not checking on our player capsule. OK, so if we want to actually tie the stamina mechanic into the first person movement, um, one thing we need to do that I forgot to do is we need to clamp our current stamina to make sure it doesn't go below zero. So I've just done if current, if current stamina is less than or equal to zero, then we're just going to set it directly to zero, just as we've done elsewhere in our script. And then over in the first person controller script, which comes 
you know, with the starter asset that we chose. If we scroll down here, we can make a private survival manager and we'll just call this survival manager. In awake, we'll get a reference to it. So we'll say equals uh, get component survival manager. That's because we first person controller is on the first person capsule. That's also where the survival manager um, script is as well. And then in our in this move function, we've got float target speed. So and this is called every frame. So here we can say if the player is holding down the sprint button and the survival manager has stamina. So if the sprinting and we have stamina, then we're gonna do our sprint speed, and if not, we're just gonna be at the move speed. So if we go back to Unity and we hit play. So I've set the stamina to five to make it drain quicker. So here we are sprinting, we have stamina. I'm running around and jumping, and then I've run out of stamina. So I'm back at the normal move speed. And it's not recharging because I'm still holding down sprint. As soon as I let go of sprint, it'll wait a second and then start to fill up. And then I can sprint again. And then it'll run out eventually. And then I, I'm no longer sprinting. Then I can let go. That'll recharge. And you can see that the hunger and thirst has started to drain as well, just as we've set up. And the thirst is going down faster than the hunger. So let's just add a way of replenishing our hunger and thirst. And then that's it. That's the system done. So I'm going to go back over to our survival system folder. And I'm going to make a new C sharp script. And I'm just going to call this food drink. Call it food and drink or, you know, whatever you want. Then let's open that up in our IDE. So over in our IDE, outside the class, I'm just going to do a require component um, type of sphere collider. Then this is so we can have an on trigger and a function. In our awake function, I'm going to get a reference to the sphere collider and just make sure it's set to is trigger. So we'll do get component sphere collider and we'll set is trigger equal to true. And then we can say on trigger enter. If the other game object has a tag of player, then we are going to do some stuff. And we're actually just going to put um, return here and say if it doesn't have the, the tag of player, then we'll just return because it's not the player. We don't want to do anything. If it is the player, we'll do um, var survival manager and we'll equal this to other.gameObject.getComponent survival manager. Then we can check to make sure we've got that. So if survival manager is null, then let's return. We've not found the survival manager, so we don't want to try and access it. If we have found the survival manager script, then we can do um, survival manager dot replenish hunger thirst. Then we're going to need some variables to pass in, and then we can just call destroy and then we'll game object. And then up here, we can have a serialized field private float. And we'll do um, hunger to replenish, as well as thirst to replenish. And we'll just pass these in. So this wants um, the hunger first, so hunger to replenish, followed by thirst to replenish. Let's go back to Unity. So I'm going to make a game object, very empty. And this will be a um, am. And then to our runtime folder, let's add in our models. These two models were from Sketchfab, so you can get these yourselves. You don't need to support me on Patreon. I'll put the link to these models in the description. Again, they're free to download. You can just drag them in uh, and use them. So to our ham, I'm going to drag in this meat. 
it as a parent and let's find it in the scene so um it's there it's also massive so let's drag the ham forward that game object was set ages away so let's drag our ham forward i'm gonna bring it up a little bit off the ground let's shrink the meat down drag the base map over into meat and then put that material on our meat i'll give it a nice little twist this we can add our food drink script and i'm going to say this um replenishes 25 hunger doesn't uh, replenish any thirst and then let's copy this i'll rename this to watermelon drag it forward place the meat with our watermelon model throw this out throw this out this out i'm actually gonna shrink our watermelon down as well give that a bit of a twist drag in our texture to the watermelon texture drag the material onto our watermelon and then we've got our watermelon here let's say this replenishes 10 health and 15 thirst and we drag a few of these around our scene if you wanted to add a bit of rotation to the items on the ground in our food drink um script you could in void update just do transform dot rotate and we'll do um transform dot up and i'll just hard code this as 20 times by time dot delta time so if we hit play all of our meat and watermelons are spinning around nicely our hunger and thirst is draining you can see that our player capsule has a tag of player on it so if we go over our uh, meat that's going to disappear and it replenished our hunger and again with the watermelon we can go over the watermelon that'll replenish the hunger and our thirst and we've got our food around on the floor so there you have it. There is our hunger, thirst, and stamina system. As I said previously, if you want the project files for this, so the scripts and the UI elements, uh, they will be available on patreon.com forward slash dampos, where you can download them and the project files for all of my other tutorials as well. If you want to see more tutorials like this in the future, it'd be great if you could hit that subscribe button down below and hit the like button. In the meantime, thanks for watching, and I will catch you all in the next one. Bye. I'd just like to take a minute to thank my fabulous Patreon supporters. In the 10,000 XP tier, we have Trey Briggs. And you can see all of the 4,000 XP tier members on screen now as well. Thanks a lot for your support.